welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. So as I'm sure most of you that follow me know, I have been getting into LARPing recently. And I know I've been covering it a lot, but it's really a fun framework to make all these projects for. Honestly, most of the stuff I've been making anyways kind of falls in that realm. But it has led me down a very specific kind of road here. Because although a really fun hobby, it's kind of an expensive hobby. Or it can be kind of an expensive hobby. So it's one thing if you have all the tools and stuff to make your own pieces of clothing and armor and you have the skill sets to do so. On the other side of that, you can go ahead and buy all the stuff, but again, both of those kind of get real expensive, right? You're either buying all the tools and materials or you're buying all of the actual ready-made stuff. That's why in today's episode, we've decided to save your wallet and honestly, save my wallet. We've decided to dip into the noble art of finding things at thrift stores and suiting them to our twisted purposes. Honestly, within the LARP community, there's whole sections of people that like, this is their thing. They love doing this. And honestly, I could see why. So without much further ado, let's see what we were able to find and level up this skill. Okay, first things first, we needed to engage in the quest of finding a good thrift store. And I do say we because Middle Miss Red, aka Maddie, or other way around, Maddie, aka Middle Miss Red, was here to help me with this as well. So in Googling thrift stores near me, I was able to find a whole bunch of really small ones, but I was also able to find this huge Salvation Army. This thing was massive. In fact, it turned out being the only place we needed to stop at all. And let me just say, I am surprised at the variety of things you could find in places like this. Like this one had this massive spinning wheel for some reason, which let me just say like my knee jerk reaction is I want that. I don't know what I would do with it. I don't know where I'd put it. Oh, I want it. It was like, it was like 20 bucks. <laughs> but wandering around in the space is a fun exercise all by itself. Cause immediately you start picturing not what they are, but what all these things could be. Like looking at all these pieces of furniture, I was just trying to figure out ways to decorate our campsite and make our tent look more badass and useful. In fact, we did end up buying this little number because it was only like 10 bucks. And honestly, that's a steal and it gives like a nice little place to put like candles and stuff in the tent, a little drawer to hide things in. I love that thing, it's great. Anyways, for the next couple of hours, we just kind of perused that place and looked at stuff, trying to figure out what kind of outfits we might be able to make out of it, what type of characters would wear these things. And this was really the most fun part. It was cool to take all these things that I normally wouldn't ever have grabbed or picked up for myself because I knew with a little bit of alteration, I could make a character out of this whole thing. Also, well on that subject, tip for the guys uh, don't be afraid to look in the women section all the guy stuff it looks very contemporary and all has kind of the same cut honestly it's, it's a little boring whereas in, in the women's section a lot of that stuff already has that kind of like medieval or fantasy vibe to it so yeah swallow your manly pride it's just clothing it's clothing guys it doesn't matter <laughs> actually while we're talking about that specifically and garb it reminded me of something that living anachronism said in this episode here where he talks about how to dress up for things like this he gives a lot of really good information so make sure you go check that out so yeah after like two hours and only sixty dollars we left with this huge haul of stuff and now comes the really fun bit this is where we get to take all that secondhand clothing and transform them into badass characters we're gonna start with what maddie was able to come up with she ended up finding this really nice skirt a super pretty white shawl this flowy yellow shirt and a really interesting vest which right away especially with that vest it was giving us this kind of romani vibe right and that's with no alterations even done that whole outfit already kind of has that vibe to it right the first thing we had to change though and really the only major alteration that had to be made was the fact that this shawl was just crazy brilliantly white I mean, it's pretty and all, but that kind of throws the character off. It would feel weird with them kind of in this medieval setting and having this perfectly bleached white shawl. It just looks out of place. Our solution for that was to actually try dyeing it with some tea. Now, I've never done this to fabrics before, but it turned out to be really easy. First, we took the shawl along with a white t-shirt that I'm thinking about using for another outfit. And this interesting lacy blue one that I thought we could pull a Viking look off with and gave the fabrics a little bit of a clean with some soapy water. Meanwhile, we set about six tea bags to seep in some boiling water for about 15 minutes. Then we added the fabric to the tea water and made sure that they were all completely submerged. 
I also stirred it around just a bit to make sure that all the little folds and crevices were also exposed to that liquid. Then it was just the waiting game for about 10 minutes or so. If you want it to be a little bit lighter, you just wait a little less time. You want it to be a little bit darker, you just wait a little more time. More art than science, really. But after the time was up, it came up with this really pretty vintage kind of color. I am really kind of impressed with how good that came out. Like, it's very solid, uniform color. I'm, I'm digging that. That came out great. Maddie then went back at that shawl with her seam ripper to open up one whole side. By opening it up like this, it's going to give us a lot more options about how we can wrap it around and use it. And with that small adjustment made, we started dressing up my mannequin to see how everything would lay out. Also to see how I'd look in a sports bra. Apparently. Because that mannequin's model after me, and I mean, to be frank, I look great. Okay. So to kind of achieve the look we're going for with as little cutting as possible, like we want this to be kind of a quick and dirty build, Maddie started by tucking in the yellow shirt just underneath the sports bra to give kind of a belly dancer feel to the whole thing. Next, she tied that shawl around the waist, which already gives it a cool kind of lived in feel. Then we layered this dope little beaded jacket just on top of everything. And again, that jacket was a sweet find. It really set the tone of the look and we didn't even have to alter it. To finish off the look, we just added a pop of color with this red sash, added a leather pouch, and then a nice kind of dangling necklace to dress it all up. And boom, that's outfit one done. This whole thing probably cost us around $15 and look at what a dope costume that is. From here, you could just start layering other stuff and build a whole character around who this person is. Or you could just use it as a base and make other characters out of it. Like this medicine woman we made just by adding a torn up rag, some fur and a staff to that base layer. I could totally see her as like a shaman or medicine woman from some mountain tribe somewhere. Maybe throw in some like face paint and, and weave in some feathers in her hair or something like that. That would look dope, right? That looked pretty cool. And again, really low investment. That's what we're going for, guys. We're going for cheap. Hell yeah. All right, Maddie got to have her fun. Now it's time for, for me to make an outfit. For my outfit, we found this little number here consisting of a pair of brown pants from the women's section and this fur vest. Both together coming in at a whopping $14. That's, that's sexy. The price, you know, and... Me. I, mean, I look again. Oh, I look great. I look good. What can I say? Now, again, when trying to come up with the character design, immediately that vest kind of makes me feel like barbarian, right? Like a good fur vest. But, you know, it's it's like a contemporary vest. It's a little too posh for a barbarian. For example, the biggest issue is just kind of how it falls right now. The cut in the way it's made just kind of makes it look like a style vest of some sort. It does not look kind of rustic or rugged at all. To fix this, Maddie just went ahead and started bunching up the back to give it a bit more of a rugged feel to it and then pinning it into position the way that she liked. Once happy with that, she moved over to the front and started folding down the collar and lapel area to see if some of that could stand to be altered and moved around as well. And even with just those few adjustments, this already had a way more barbarian-esque look to it. A little bit less into club, a little bit more into cave. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean. Before we key in on those alterations though, we really kind of want to make sure this was the character we wanted it to be. So to better visualize that, we started putting some other little pieces of flair on there. For this, we busted out a bunch of just leather scraps and started picking through the rattier pieces. We landed on this really nice piece of chrome tan leather that already had a good rustic look to it. With only a couple of my belts to hold everything into place, this big old scrap of leather really boosted up that barbarian feel to 11. We also decided to bust out this little claw charm that I've had just forever. I bought it as an impulse buy at Tandy, like they had it just kind of near the register and I was like, oh, I want that. But by simply tying it to a cord of leather with some wax thread, I was able to make this really simple but adequately badass necklace. And there, with only about 10 minutes worth of work, we had a basic outline of what we wanted this character to be. Now with that structure in place and locked in that that's what we want it to be, we can actually start making alterations to this vest. For starters, we went in with the seam ripper and just started tearing out this shiny lining because honestly, a barbarian isn't lining his furs. I mean, that's being presumptuous, that's not fair. A barbarian could want to line their furs and just look fabulous. In fact, challenge, I want you, I want to see one of you make a fabulous barbarian. Style it up, I want to see it. I'm, I'm curious now if you can do it. For my barbarian though, having all that shiny fabric out makes a really nice neutral base for me to work with. 
Now, I really wanted this build to be something that anybody could feel like they could approach. So I was reticent to cut away a lot of that fabric because then you'd be left with like a ragged edge that you'd have to then fold up and finish off by sewing. It just, it, I didn't want it to be that much. So instead of cutting those lapels away, we ended up just kind of folding them in and then deciding to lock them into place that way. And to do this, we simply jabbed an awl through both layers of fabric and then sent this leather cordage through. Then we put another hole diagonally from the first and fish cordage through that one as well. After doing this two more times, I was left with this cool kind of X pattern to hold everything to place and also give a really subtle detail to the vest. And after doing it to the other side as well, look at how good that looks. I am totally getting like a barbarian vibe. Like they're just like, yes, leather so. So next we need to lock in how that back falls too. To do that, I just use needle and thread to tack it into the same position that the pins are holding it in. Then we reinforced it by doing the same thing we did to the front by adding leather cordage to it. Look at how dope that falls now. It looks like the scruff of some wild creature that I killed and skinned with my bare hands. Now this is only one piece of the layering, obviously. Like if you're some like beefy sword, I'm sure you can go ahead and, and not use like a shirt underneath to be super strong barbarian. I, I got I gotta work out more for that. I got like a nipple on a rib going on here. So I don't I don't think that would look I don't think that would look good at all for me. But if you can pull it off, whatever, I'm not jealous. You're jealous. But this is where that old white t-shirt that I tea-stained earlier is gonna come in. It is super easy to take kind of a plain t-shirt and turn it into something that looks like in that period, right? All you really have to do is remove all of the finished edges you have going on. So for starters on this one, I went ahead and removed that finished collar from around the neck. I did this by just roughly cutting it away with a pair of scissors. Next, I make a cut down the front of my shirt just to give me a place to add some laces to really drive home that look. Then I went ahead and cut away my sleeves as my barbarian has no need for such silly posh things. Then for a final cut, I just removed the finished edge down at the bottom of the shirt. Finally, I wanted to add some like lacing, like I said, to the, the opening of the shirt here, just to kind of really drive home that look. To do this, I had this ginormous upholstery needle and some thick thread. Now, obviously, I recommend taking off your shirt while you do this. It was just already on me and I'm lazy and dumb. You know, do as I say, not as I do and all that. <laughs> but yeah, I just simply made this kind of crisscross pattern, leaving the ends hanging to achieve this simple closure look. A quick note though, there are no grommets in here and it's just thin t-shirt material. So it really is kind of just for the look. I'm pretty sure if you tightened it down hard or you kind of pulled on them, you're just gonna rip into the shirt. But for the general feel of what we're going for, this pulls it off, it looks good. Now putting the whole costume together, look at how epic that is. And for only like what? $15 worth of new gear? And sure, maybe you don't have leather scraps lying around to fill in those parts, but you can use literally anything your character would use. And for just a starter kind of base of a costume that took maybe an hour to do, I'm really jazzed at how that came out. And honestly, this is so much fun because they're cheap and they're easy little projects to do. And some of them require no alterations at all. It just comes down to layering. Like look at this green jumpsuit that Maddie found. It needs nothing done to it to be the base layer for some science fiction post-apocalyptic type world. She's totally giving off Kaylee vibes from Firefly and I am all about it. All we had to do is add some belts and tools. Maybe throw on a little makeup to make it look like grease or something like you've been working all day. That's a, that's a really cool outfit right there. In fact, the only thing we got that didn't end up working out was this blue top we found here. So originally, I thought I could make some kind of cool Viking style tunic out of it, kind of like this one here. But turns out when things are cut specifically for women, there ends up being a lot of fabric kind of up top here. You know what, whatever. My middle-aged wizard with a day drinking problem slays in every room she walks into and she knows it. So yeah, although LARPing or cosplaying or honestly just getting ready for like a costume party for Halloween or whatever can be super expensive if you go to town and buy all the top of the line new stuff that's made for, you know, everybody. But it doesn't have to be. Again, for these things that are custom made and we made fit ourselves, uh, it only costs us $60 for the entire haul. And half of that was like furniture and baskets and stuff. In clothing, we spent maybe $30, $35. And with really little alteration, we're able to layer together some really cool creative costumes. And that right there is really the key to making these things feel realistic. It's layering. 
Just think of what your particular character needs in the course of their day and make sure you kind of add that to it. Just get in the mind of whatever character you're trying to do and be like, okay, they're waking up in the morning, they're getting dressed. What are the things that they're gonna need and, and are the things that they want on themselves to present themselves the way they want to? Maybe they're a shaman who believes that if they go outside without these special charms on, they're gonna be like possessed by some sort of demon in the air. Or are you some kind of field medic who has to have all of your potions and stuff on your belt so at a moment's notice you can try to save somebody from death? All of these things are going to make this character feel more realistic and feel really lived in. And honestly, it's kind of the most exciting part about doing it. At least to me. I don't know. Tell me down in the comments section if you have like a character you love or something you want to make and how you go about it. Anyways, if you liked what you saw here today, why don't you give me some of that like it love and let me know. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. In the meantime, though, keep leveling up, you. Skull, you stayed to the end screen. You staying all the way to the end is a really huge way to support this channel, so I really appreciate it. Another huge way to support this channel is by joining these incredible people who give to our Patreon. And I'd like to welcome more to their noble ranks. Bethany Michael, Scott Scaprin, Karzi, Gary Amen, Jared the Maker, General Mormon, and Daniel. Thank you all so much. I really, I am humbled and amazed that, that anybody gives to us, so I really appreciate it. If you'd like to support this channel, consider joining our Patreon, link in the description below. Or you can watch one of these videos, because that helps too. I am all that is warrior.